so in this video we're going to be talking a bit about landscapes and about chapter 9 which covers photographing at dusk and dawn. So photographing facing away from the sun during um, let's say sunset is great to really catch the color changes happening on your subject and get your subject with some nice light on them. Photographing facing towards the sunset or rise will show your subject as a silhouette. So here are some examples here. Um, this was, I told you guys a bit about these photos before, but this was a musician in Portland uh, playing the piano at sunset. And so from here, the sun is behind me and the nice sun is hitting my subject and lighting him up really nice. Okay, so this is gonna be the same guy, but I've got on the other side of him. And so now I'm photographing towards the sun. The sun is, you know, over here behind him, but I'm facing the sun as it's going down. And we can get these really beautiful colors happening in the sunset sky. Um, and then here we have um, also facing that same direction, but with a little bit more out. And with this shot, I decided to use the trees as a framing device, if you remember from the composition lecture, to frame in my subject here, which is the landscape and the guy playing the piano in the landscape. Okay, and so one thing that you can do, a lot of people think of their flash as only being useful when it's really dark at night outside or indoors, but um, in situations where you're facing towards the sun, now these photos weren't taken, uh, they were taking a little bit after the sun rose, and these were on a mountain, actually a volcano in Hawaii, but as you can see from this first photo, uh, the sun is back over here, so I'm uh, shooting towards the sun, which is making my subject go into a silhouette. So this is a great time to use your flash because the background is nice and bright, but your foreground subject is not bright, and your flash can only go so far. Your flash cannot light up 50, 100 feet away from you, but it can light up, you know, usually three, four, five, six, seven feet, depending on your flash away from you. So this is a shot without any flash at all. And then we played around and I played with adding a flash. And you can see the sun is still the brightest light because here's our shadows over here. And then I got a shot with us with the flash lighting us up a bit. So a lot better. You can actually see our faces than in this first shot here. And then this is with a little bit of post-processing and editing, which I'll talk about later on in the semester. But as you can see, like I said, this was a great time to use your flash. Okay, so continuing on, sunset to dusk. Now during this time, it's usually about an hour-ish, um, two hours sometimes, that you can get some really beautiful light happening and things change really fast. Uh, so here I was shooting away from the sun and I was wanting to, you know, hopefully wait and get the lights coming up on the bridge and such. But this is a nice example to show you how fast the light can really change from moment to moment. I think I was shooting for about an hour. And so you could see how the sky starts to turn from this blue and we have a lot more nice pinks starting to appear. And now, if you guys notice, at the beginning, with this shot for instance, there's a lot more light and so my shutter speed was a lot faster and I was freezing the motion of the waves coming in. But as the light gets slower, I am getting a longer and longer shutter speed, a slower shutter speed, which is gonna show motion. So if you can already see right here, we're not freezing the waves anymore, we're showing the motion of the waves. Right. So let's get back over here. And so I have the, the waves are becoming more and more of this softness instead. Now at a certain point, we start getting into the blue hour. 
So the hour before um, sunset is usually called the golden hour. And you can see some of that golden light here. Now the sun was way over here setting, so didn't quite catch that for this shot. That's usually called the golden hour. Then it starts to set and we start getting these really nice colors, but then it starts turning into what we call the blue hour. And you can see what I'm talking about right here. We're going from these yellow, I mean from these beautiful pinks and such into more of a blue sky. And now the lights are starting to come up, which is what I was looking for. And now you can really see that we are not capturing very much motion at all. This is a really slow shutter speed at this point. Okay, and then ran over to try to get some more of what was going on over here, and there was so much water splashing around that uh, I got a bunch of droplets on my camera. <laughs> um, and then, just a side story, uh, as I was trying to photograph this last shot, a giant wave came and almost took me out. So I grabbed my camera and tried to pull it towards me, and because there was that motion of my camera, the lights streaked around and left these light trails in the image. Actually ended up being one of my favorite images. And this is with it being cleaned up in Photoshop a little bit. Took out uh, this part right here. Oh. Okay, and then the final image I ended up with was one of the dusk shots. And you could see the little, that all of the lights have this kind of star pattern happening and that's from ha using a small aperture where the opening of my lens was really small that will create these star-like patterns when it comes to lights okay so now I'm going to show you a progression of shots shooting into the sunset okay so this time I'm facing towards the sunset and again this is probably an hour-ish before uh, the sun actually set and there was all of these little things, uh, I think they're called the velas, velas, I'm sorry, uh, that were washing up on the beach. So I started going around and shooting them and waiting for the sunset. And you could see what I'm talking about when it comes to the golden hour at this point. And I'm running around and trying different points of view, getting higher, getting lower. trying um, vertical formats and horizontal formats straight above, getting my belly right down on the sand for this one to really get close to it. And now the sun is getting really low and you can really see what I'm talking about with this golden light happening over here. Okay. And if you remember me talking about um, foreground and background in your compositions, well, this is a really cool moment because I was on my belly trying to get these and then the surfers started coming out of the waves and people were walking around. So now I have this really nice uh, foreground elements, middle ground elements, and then a beautiful background to complement it all. So I just kept on shooting and I think my favorite shot ended up being this one here where you know we talked about the rule of thirds but for this shot I liked my subject um, you know in the middle here but I'm still in a way using the rule of thirds. It's a third down here and then I have the mountains back here breaking up that third area right up there. And a couple more shots so you can really see the difference from shooting into the sun versus shooting away from the sun during this time. Now some quick tips when it comes to landscapes. Um, like I mentioned um, before, using a small aperture will help you get as much of your scene in focus as possible. So, but this, uh, sometimes it means long shutter speed, so you might need to use a tripod so you don't have any blur happening that's unintentional. Um, you want to look for shots that have an interesting foreground element to complement the middle ground and the foreground of your scene. Okay, and then going back to shutter speeds, freezing the motion of water like crashing waves 
requires a faster shutter speed, while showing the motion or flowy looking water means you need a long shutter speed or a slow shutter speed with a tripod. So here's some examples. So here we have a fast shutter speed of one four thousandth of a second and you can see all the drops and streams of water coming down. And with this one we have a slow shutter speed, one thirteenth of a second. And this shows some, show, some um, flowy looking water instead. So this is a favorite thing for landscape photographers to do when they're photographing water. Now here's some more examples. So here's some flowy water, so it was a relatively slower shutter speed. Well, this is not much, uh, it's still a bit more frozen, so it's going to be a faster shutter speed. More examples of really slow shutter speeds, these are in Iceland. You get that nice flowy water happening. And here I show you again with um, an interesting human element. Humans always add more interest to a photo. Again, another Iceland shot with a rock in the foreground for an interesting foreground element. Now, if you really love landscape photography and want to get more into it, um, this is an intro class, but uh, I did add some extra stuff for you guys to check out in my lecture. So here's an article, 10 Landscape Photographers You Should Know, and the first one on there is Ansel Adams, which a lot of you wrote your papers on. So go ahead and check that out if it's interesting to you. And we also have um, some extra videos I've added in, uh, some that are just a couple minutes long to some that are quite a bit longer. And there's all kinds of great tips for landscape composition um, and not just, you know, water and such. I have some about photographing the giant trees we have here in California. And this last video here, if this is really piquing your interest and you just have to know more, uh, this is a pretty long video, a couple hours long. So enjoy and get out there and take some landscape photos.